Si han estado en el canal desde hace tiempo, saben que GoodNotes ha sido mi app de elección para hacer apuntes desde que hice el cambio a lo digital. Aquí tengo varios tutoriales de la app y les he ido compartiendo cómo la utilicé durante mis cuatro años de universidad y cómo ha transicionado a ser ahora mi herramienta de trabajo ahora que estoy en mi vida profesional. Compartí con ustedes cómo fue mi proceso iniciando como principiante en los apuntes digitales utilizando GoodNotes hace casi cinco años y juntos hemos platicado sobre las actualizaciones, los pros, los contras, hemos hecho comparaciones e incluso hemos brindado feedback a GoodNotes sobre lo que nos gustaría seguir viendo en la app. Hola, soy Esme y en mi canal platicamos sobre tecnología, apuntes digitales, productividad y muchísimo más. GoodNotes acaba de presentar su actualización más grande hasta el momento y en esta ocasión tuve la oportunidad de entrevistar a Steven, quien es el fundador y CEO de GoodNotes. Platicamos sobre este lanzamiento y las novedades que nos trae esta versión y también me platicó sobre el futuro de GoodNotes y cómo ha logrado mantenerse como una de las apps más utilizadas de notas digitales por estudiantes en todo el mundo. Así que quédate a ver la entrevista completa y no olvides suscribirte porque pronto estaré subiendo un recorrido a detalle de la nueva actualización aquí en el canal. Antes de la entrevista les quiero dar como que un mini recorrido de mis funciones favoritas que he estado probando hasta ahora. Para el momento en el que estoy grabando este video solamente está disponible la versión beta, pero para cuando lo suba ya va a estar disponible la versión normal, la versión pública, así que ya pueden ir al App Store y actualizarla. Lo primero que vemos es que ahora el botón de nuevo ya no se encuentra de este lado, sino que ahora se encuentra aquí arribita y nos da esas nuevas dos opciones. La primera es pizarra y la segunda es documento de texto. La que yo estoy utilizando más es pizarra, ya que me gusta ver todo como que puesto en mi pantalla. Lo primero es que podemos cambiar el nombre, idioma, patrón y el color de la pizarra. Yo le voy a poner un nombre normal, le voy a poner beta. Una de las primeras cosas que vemos es que la barra se ve distinta. Lo primero es, ya no tenemos aquí las funciones de pluma ni nada, sino que al darle clic al lapicito se nos va a abrir esta ventana, diría flotante, pero no se puede mover, está como que estática, pero da la, da la ilusión de que es una ventana flotante. Pero desde aquí podemos checar todas las configuraciones de nuestro lápiz luego tenemos la herramienta lazo que ya la conocemos tenemos la herramienta de cuadro de texto la herramienta de cuadro de texto eh, sucede algo similar a la herramienta de lápiz ahora cuando ponemos un nuevo bloque se nos abre igual esta tipo ventanita flotante para cambiar la configuración de nuestro texto luego tenemos stickers imágenes y eso también es nuevo que es figuras y eso es muy útil especialmente aquí en Pizarrón, ya que por ejemplo si quiero hacer un mapa, me refiero obviamente a un tipo mapa mental, puedo por ejemplo poner aquí un cuadro y aquí un círculo y ya simplemente seleccionando esta herramienta los puedo unir y así de fácil creamos conectores entre ambas figuras. Dentro de las figuras podemos añadir texto, eso ya viene predeterminado, podemos cambiar el color del de cuadro y podemos cambiar el color del trazo también. Tenemos sticky notes, tenemos nuestro puntero y aquí tenemos la opción de regla. Nada más está la opción de regla porque es whiteboards, pero también podemos aquí acceder a la función grabación de audio. De este lado tenemos lo que ya conocemos que es el modo lectura y también tenemos aquí as good notes. Igualmente en el video que les estaré subiendo va a venir muchísimo más explicado as good notes, ya que está un poco cambiado como lo teníamos antes, está un poco más completo y muchísimo más poderoso. Y tenemos aquí la herramienta buscar y tenemos nuestro índice. La segunda función nueva que tenemos es documentos de texto. Ese tipo de procesador de textos es distinto a los que conocemos ya que este eh, se maneja por bloques. Es decir, podemos elegir aquí qué tipo de bloque queremos añadir a nuestro texto documento tenemos la opción de párrafo diferentes tamaños de título eh, listas tipo bullets tenemos pues listas enumeradas podemos añadir checklist códigos tablas y un montón de funciones más podemos añadir aquí mismo imágenes video audio eh, por ejemplo aquí tenemos las columnas y dentro de las columnas también podemos añadir por ejemplo, imágenes. Básicamente vas construyendo bloques dentro de tu documento. De igual forma, en el video que les haga de la actualización, esto va a estar muchísimo más explicado con todo y ejemplos, así que estén pendientes. Esas son algunas de las funciones, no son todas las funciones, son algunas de las funciones que vamos a estar encontrando en la nueva actualización y estén pendientes para el video en el que les voy a mostrar todo más a fondo y listo, quédense para la entrevista. Los veo pronto. Hello, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? Very good, very good. Um, thanks for... Uh, spending the time to talk to me. Nice to meet you, Esme. So we all know that GoodNotes has become the note-taking app for students, but what's exciting for me is how much is growing beyond the classroom. And today I'd love to talk about the evolution and the role of community feedback and where the app is headed in the future. 
So right now, Good Notes is the go-to app for students around the world, especially for digital note-taking. But at the same time, more and more professionals are starting to rely on it on their workflows, me being one of them. So how is Good Notes evolving to not just be an academic tool, but also a professional one for work and career? Great question. So um, maybe let's go back in time. So when I started Good Notes back in, back in 2010, I was a <clears throat> I was a student at that time, um, and then I was trying to build an app for myself for my own studies, um, and but at that time I was actually trying to build Gunos to be a general purpose pen and paper replacement, but then um, uh, students uh, quickly um, find it really useful for for their own studies, so I was not building for students at that time. I was trying to build a general purpose uh, note taking app. Then it caught on and then become really popular among students, especially in the higher ed. So that's why we have been really focused on building the best note-taking experience, the best note-taking companion for studies uh, over uh, a couple of uh, many years actually. Um, and then now we see there are a lot of possibilities to continue to improve Gunox, not just for students, but also for, for, for professionals. That's why we want to um, make Gunos the general purpose note-taking app for everyone, including professionals. So that's why we're expanding beyond notebook and PDF into whiteboard, which is really great for collaboration, but also a type text a document format so that you don't have to use stylus uh, all the time, but you can also use keyboard. Do you see Good Notes moving towards being a competitor to project management or productivity tools, or is it staying focused on note-taking? We are still uh, very focused on note-taking, but we want to be a um, bigger part of um, people's workflow, especially when it comes to capturing ideas, uh, brainstorming with colleagues. So we want to help people to basically come up with better ideas. That sounds very exciting as a professional because it's been very fun to discover new ways to use good notes beyond school. And one thing I've noticed is that the app keeps adding new features, but it still feels very simple to use. So how do you find that balance between making the app more powerful, but keeping it simple and intuitive? It has not been easy. So definitely we want to continue to <laughs> make new, possibil uh, new possibilities in Gunox. But how do we continue to keep the simplicity, the great user experience that people love about Gunox? So that's why uh, we actually spend a lot of thoughts into how we can revamp the user experience, the UI itself to um, support new functionalities without impacting simplicity. So I need to thank our design team and also our user community for uh, supporting us in this journey. So there are a lot of design explorations and then testing with our users and then also hearing feedback during the beta uh, testing period. So um, for example, one example is our new toolbar. It's a way where we think will be more scalable uh, for the future of Gnox so that uh, the tools, the features are better grouped together so that you are very easy to get what you, um, to access the tools that you need. Good Notes is mostly used by students and professionals like me, but have you seen any cases where the way people use it really surprise you? I think one um, example is uh, digital planning. So I was, <clears throat> I think that was quite a number of years ago when we discovered there's a, a really passionate uh, user community using Gunox for digital planning. So, and then they have really beautiful digital planners in Gunox. Mm -hmm. So I was totally surprised. I think we are always very surprised by that. And then that's why we started to prioritize making the digital planning experience better in Gunox. And then that's also why we also now have a uh, marketplace in Gunox for people to discover uh, different templates for their digital planning. That's actually how I use it most in my professional life. All my digital planning is on Good Notes. Um, of course, I know you use Good Notes on the daily, but which feature do you rely on the most? Um, so I personally keep a notebook uh, for myself. So I would add my um, thoughts, ideas, especially thinking about the future of Good Notes, into this notebook. And then I also <laughs> use a digital planner to help me plan for the next month, next year, um, to visualize like, what's happening. But now I'm starting to use, uh, rely on Gnox for any type Gnox as well, which was uh, more difficult before. Now I really enjoy using the typed text document across all the devices. And the new whiteboard 
it's really helpful even without for our team to uh, bring some more new ideas. And then that feeling of uh, writing without boundary is uh, really uh, incredible. There are many productivity tools out there, but how do you see GoodNotes fitting into the bigger ecosystem over the next few years? Yeah, so I think the uh, productivity space is a very crowded space, um, both like, for education, but also for work. Um, so I, I think um, we will continue to strengthen our brand as a note-taking app, uh, as, uh, as GoodNotes, and then we want to uh, expand this brand to not just for stylist use cases, but also for becoming a um, general note-taking app that everyone can use, but also as a almost like a thinking partner with you, especially with our GNUX AI, with different types of um, documents that can be used in different scenarios. So we want to create a really um, comprehensive experience to help users capture their ideas, but also to um, come up with better ideas. For someone who is new to GoodNotes, how would you describe this latest update in just one sentence? In just one sentence? Oh, uh, I like that. So I, I think GoodNotes is your go-to note-taking app to capture any ideas with any kind of input, whether it's stylus, keyboard, or even audio with GoodNotes AI to help you as, a, as your assistant. Now, without giving too much away, what's one big direction that you would love to see GoodNotes grow into? So a big future direction for us is definitely the business world. So we have a lot of users um, studying with Gunox, um, and then we want people to be able to continue to use Gunox when they um, go to work. So our aim is to become a major productivity platform, being core part of um, professional work workspaces. That's very exciting because I've been a user for about five or six years now, since my very first year of college. And it's amazing to see how the app has grown with me. I started my YouTube channel because I wanted to share digital note-taking tips, especially in Spanish, and GoodNotes has been at the center of that journey. And as a professional, digital planning has been my favorite way to use it now, and I'm really excited to see what's next. So thank you so much for joining me, Steven. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing your story. I can totally relate to that because that's the reason we I started GoodNotes in the first place, to replace all my notebooks. And then now I'm also working, I'm also using GoodNotes. And thanks for uh, spreading the word of GoodNooks through your channel.